Hey, what's up, Lightbulb Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the brand new 2020 show, Amazon original show, executive produced by Jordan Peele Hunters. This stars Logan Lerman, Al Pacino, Carol Kane, a slew of other people. This is a 10 episode long adventure action thing. A lot of twists and turns. It takes place in many, many decades, actually. Primary focus is 1977 Brooklyn. But it's about hunting Nazis who are in America. That a lot of, and this is actually historically accurate, a lot of, when, the, when World War II ended, the United States had brought over scientists, biologists, chemists, engineers, mathematicians, doctors, who were in the Nazi party, for that matter, to work on certain projects that the U.S. government was going towards. So NASA is pretty much all filled with ex-Nazis uh, scientists who developed a lot of different technology to get us to the moon, basically, in 1969, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? All these different projects and medicines and living longer and all these things are because of these specific males and females that's an actual fact like you can actually google that so it was nice seeing some sense of realism as horrifying as it is it is nice seeing some, some sense of realism within this fictitious story a historical fiction right that's what this is so logan Lerman, logan lerman love logan we talked about how much i love logan in the perks of being a wallflower review that we did recently uh he is been a child actor since he was a kid. He is most known for his Percy Jackson role in the first and second movie, which us as fans of the book series, I have all of the books of the 30 some odd Rip Riordan Percy verse books to my right, your left. He was a great, he was a great Percy. I give him that. They did horrible justice to the books within those two movies, but he himself was a great Percy. Logan really got the, that standout, you know, millennial feel to him with uh, Perks from what was that, what was that, 2012, something like that. So Logan is a great actor. He is amazing. He's disgusting when he cries, he he trembles, he is very specific, he's dramatic, he's believable. So to have him and Al Pacino have various scenes together, because they're the two main characters of this show, powerful, because Al is such a great actor and artist that he is in general, being in the business for 40 plus years, right? So to have these two powerhouses, and Logan doesn't get as much credit as Logan deserves, it was really nice seeing that from an artistic point. Carol Kane is a, an amazing actress that he is. She plays every single role the same, but she's Carol Kane, and she's just perfect. Whether it's a comedy role or a drama role, she still has the accent, she still just plays it perfectly. Everyone else did a great job with the roles they were given. I wasn't a fan of the twists. I thought it was dumb, to be honest. I thought this show dragged like hell i mean the first like three episodes was like ramping up and you're like okay okay cool and then like the, the logan's character jonah like broke the code that the nazis were getting together and he comes into this organization because al pacino's character of meyer uh turns out to be his grandfather at some point and his grandmother is the one who was just murdered so it's a revenge story trying to you know revenge the grandmother's death right that, that's who jonah logan's character lives with all of these different things come about and like episode six or seven, we, we ramp up to something happening on June, what, 13th, 1977, whenever the big New York blackout was, that was all looting and stuff like that. That was a big plot point in this, that it was targeted and a plot for uh, Nazis Fourth Reich when they uh, trying to uprise America, things of that nature. I thought, I honestly thought they should have just kept it at that. Like, I thought it was a nice ramp up. And then the blackout happens and then nothing happens. And then it turns out that the Nazis are trying to plot by killing everybody by putting a poison in corn syrup that was being launched by this factory in Jersey. And then two episodes of trying to blow up that factory and then they blow up that factory. And then the last episode is Logan figuring out that, you know... Al Pacino's character of Meyer is actually the wolf the entire time, just had plastic surgery and this whole big reveal that he was wearing a mask the entire time. And I'm like, I'm watching it and I'm like, but why? Like, yeah, it's a twist, but you had too many different stories going on within a 10 episode bit. Like, 
I thought it was weird. I thought it was weird from a storytelling perspective. You're amping up for, you know, six or seven episodes to this New York City blackout, right? Keeping the historical fiction accurate. And then nothing happens. It, all this happens within what? Like a month? Like a, th a few weeks or something like that? Like the, the Logan and his friends hang out at Coney Island a few times. You know, his friend gets killed in a, in a comic book store that they work out together. I did love that Spider-Man slash Peter Parker was mentioned three times with all of this. I thought that was really neat. And I did love the opening that the movie started off with the three kids watching Spider-Man. Not Spider-Man. Star Wars. I thought that was really neat. I really liked the first episode. I thought it was a great opening, what was it, an hour and a half episode to like, this is the story. And the story ended when the blackout happened, as far as I'm concerned. And then the next three episodes was just fluff to reveal yet another twist. And then the nun has another disguise, and then the very end shows Hitler and Eva, who's actually the colonel, are alive and well in Argentina with four blonde, you know, quadruplets. I, I just... I honestly think it should have just ended at the blackout. I don't see the point of the rest of the series season. And that's the other thing. Was this a mini series? Was this a was this a season one of a of the show? Like it's unfortunate because you have extremely talented people in this, and I just feel like the story was way too disjointed, which dragged so many times. But there were some really intense moments. There was a lot of torture moments. There was there was gore, there was like scandalous sex going on. It was, you know, it's a good adult show that should have ended with the New York City blackout. If you put the plot point of the plague virus, or no, they didn't say virus, what'd they say? Pathogen. If they had the pathogen tied with the with the blackout, that would have made more sense. But then throwing the wolf was Meyer the whole time, excuse me, Meyer was the wolf the whole time, and then Hitler is alive and well after they kidnapped Joe. They brought him to Argentina, like, okay, you should have just had that as a second, you should have had that reveal as your, like, second season's plot point. You should have ended the first season at the blackout, and then had the second season with that Hitler being alive and well, the wolf and Meyer being the same person. I think that would have made, made more sense. It kind of brought me back to when The Walking Dead was good. Back in the day, they had amazing mid-season finales. I haven't watched Walking Dead in years for various reasons. But I, when I watched it, I remember they had really good mid-season finales and then really good mid-season premieres and then really good season finales, right? They had a good four. And, you know, season premiere too. And the, the middle stuff was fluff. I, mean, I don't know why. But I just remember that. And that's kind of what this felt like. It felt like that blackout was a... They were forcing it as a mid-season finale, even though it wasn't episode five out of ten. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it, there was too much going on. They should have stretched it out if they wanted to tell this much story in that amount of time. That's the other thing. Talking about time, it's jumping back and forth from World War II, Auschwitz, you know, war crimes and striped pajamas and work labor and human chessboards with razor blades was an intense scene. Let me let me tell you that. That was very violent. Very genius in the horror sense, but very violent too. Jordan Peele's good with the horror. So let's let's talk about this then, right? We're noticing my facial expressions. We're noticing my size. We're noticing my looking away from camera because, A, that ring light hurts my eyes when I stare at it for too long. And I just, if you stare long enough, I just see pink. Which means that that's the blood I'm seeing in my eyes. And I don't think that's good for me. But I'm also looking away because I'm thinking. And I'm thinking now on the means of, with the <clears throat> five new series I've just seen recently, right? We talked about Reprisal on Hulu. We talked about Dollface on Hulu. We talked about Upgrade on Prime. We talked about... What the fuck did I just see before this? Uh... Oh, uh, Never Have I Ever, I'm an Idiot, on Netflix, and then Hunters, right? I specifically watched Reprisal for Mina. I watched Dollface for Kat Dennings and Brenna Song. I watched Upgrade for Robbie Amal. I watched Never Have I Ever because the trailer made it look absolutely hilarious. And I've, already, I've watched it twice already. Talk about 10 episodes going quick. Um, that was an incredible show. And then 
this is Hunters, which I watch for Logan Lerman. So remember, and I keep saying this, I watch certain projects, whether it's a film or TV series, because of certain actors and actresses. Or I watch them for the plot. I did not know anything about Never Have I Ever, which is the fourth thing we mentioned. And that is my favorite out of the five that we just mentioned. So it's funny how that works that way. So out of the five we just talked about, right, I would rank Never Have I Ever as the best out of the five. Hands down, without a doubt, I've literally seen it twice already. Upgrade would be the second. Perfect. Robbie Mal is genius. I love that whole twist on the, you know, Avatar Afterlife. That was cool. Uh, Dollface, number three. Genius show that that was. Absolutely perfect with three of them. Uh, I'm going to have to go Hunter. Hunter's as four because Logan was just absolutely phenomenal with Al Pacino. Those scenes are just incredible. Like I said, all the actors and actresses did a great job. And then I'm going to have to go number five for reprisal. I just, I, I, there's so many things that annoy me with that show. And I only saw it because of Mina. And I feel bad because those actors and actresses did a great job as well. But that plot point was just so boring. And it could, it was just so Riverdale meets Sons of Anarchy. And it was just trying and it just didn't work. And I don't know. Uh, yeah, so... I don't know what else to say about Hunters specifically. I, I I don't I don't agree with how the story was told. I don't agree. I liked the literal historical aspects of it. I did. I really liked bringing the 1977 blackout into it for New York City. I thought that was genius. But I, I just I'm not happy with with how the twists at the end were just so like, oh, it was this the whole time? Like it's weird. Like there was no build up for it. There was build-up for the blackout, but there was no build-up for the wolf and Meyer, that whole, the wolf, wolf being Meyer the whole time, like, with a new face. Meyer being the wolf the whole time. There you go. Am I rambling? I feel like I'm rambling. I don't know. Have you guys seen one of any of the five shows that I just mentioned? Go watch Never Have I Ever and Upgrade and Dollface. Without a doubt amazing new shows go watch them so thank you hulu thank you prime and thank you netflix for having a lot of new stuff come about having a lot of new ways of portraying certain things so yeah i think we're good i think we're good for now let's see what we talk about next hmm. i wonder that's all i got yeah i can't think of anything else time to sleep <laughs> Jim, <I'm> <laughs>